Okay, so as we have created and we have learned the process of creating the particles and we have also attached over the nerves and geometry. We also control the flow and the motion of the particles along the UNV sample area of the nerve geometry. Plus we have also given some twisting inside the particles. Now in this video we we'll like to talk about the creation process of the fluids and we would like to attach the fluids with the particle systems. So first thing comes first we need to go to the FX menu and need to go inside the fluids menu and then we're going to create the 3D containers. Okay so in this case I first would like to move to the reset settings and in the reset settings I would like to switch off the ammeter as well as you know the settings of the basic ammeter attributes is also need to be switched off because we don't want the fluid container to have the inbuilt ammeter alright so apply and close so with that you can see we have got the fluid container and let me just gonna go inside the perspective view for the better clarity so now you can see let me just gonna hit the timeline back and first I would like to position my fluid container near on the lamp and once I'm done with this I would like to arrange the size of the fluid containers let us say for the x-axis which is this thing indicated with the yellow color I would like to go with 6 as a starting point and for the y I would like to go with the 5 and for the z again I would like to go with the 6 so with that as you can see I'm now starting arranging the fluid containers so let me just gonna give some enough space over here because some of the smoke will going to bounce back and it should not be you know colliding with the walls of the fluid since I'll be giving the negative z axis as a boundary okay so I think so the values are pretty much good the size of the fluid container is pretty good and for the base resolution we would like to start with 60 as a start although we would be finishing the value approximately 100 or 120 for the base resolutions but as if for a good start 60 is quite a good figure so now comes to the boundary uh, it's obvious like that you know this will this container will start getting expand as the motion of the particles do you know reach towards the dragon so for the x-axis we like to give none okay there shouldn't be any boundary for the x-axis and I think so we can give five that could be quite a good okay that is that is actually okay so for the boundary y we like to give it the y negative so that the fluid should be going down and let's just put them a little bit more you can say by pressing the alt and the down arrow keys I can go back okay that is quite good now for the boundary z axis we like to give to the z negative which is the opposite side over here now that is fine moving forward to the contents method here in this reaction we would be depending only upon the two things that is the density and the velocity we are not going to utilize the temperature and the fuel okay so both the density and the velocity section should be set to the dynamic grid fine now moving forward towards the boundary draw we like to give it to the bonding box and for the dynamic simulation that's quite important attribute to be understood so the viscosity is required to be 0, 0, 1, 0 or maybe 0 0.005 okay the damp is required to be 0 0.025 and the solver is going to be the navier stokes always for the gas yeah, you know simulation this suits to be the best the hydrogel solve is required to be all grids and the sub steps we need to give it to the two with the solver quality to approximately 150 to maybe 120 all right to give the crispiness inside the smoke or you can say the sharpness inside the smoke the sharpness is the better word to describe the smoke all right so for the simulation rate scale it still need to be one and we need to utilize the amidin sub steps since we are utilizing the sub steps of the fluids well basically these sub steps or amidin sub steps are also you know used when we have the fast moving you know ammeter inside the fluids and also when the ammeter size is lesser than the size of the voxels but in this case the size is not like that much considered point but the speed may could be so to avoid any skipping of the frames of the fluids 
we are required to give the subsets to. Okay, so moving forward for the auto resize, I would like to, you know, utilize the auto resize uh, facilities, which is, you know, the fluid container where you are automatically going to resize itself once it will going to start catching the particles. And, you know, instead of using the whole big container, it's always advised to use the auto resize. Okay, so resize close boundary should be switched off so that there is, if it is on, then there is no use of taking the boundaries. And the threshold need to be 0 0.1, 0 0.001. And the margin needs to be 4, maybe to the 5, depending upon your, you know, artistic decision. If in any case the fluid start getting stuck to the boundaries or, you know, particles may could get stuck to the boundaries or the fluid find a little hard time to expand itself, you may could adjust this value to the 4 to the 6, okay. Moving forward to the density section, so the buoyancy will get back to the 0 because we don't want the smoke to, you know, rise itself or, you know, make itself, you know, energize or, you know, uh, this magical smoke is required to follow the path which we have constructed. Okay, rest things will going to depend upon the values of the gradient force and the velocity, etc. So, for the buoyancy, we like to give it to zero. For the dissipation, we like to give it to the three, so that the f the smoke should also needs to get end. Otherwise, the f smoke will start getting accumulated inside the containers. And uh, we like to skip all those attributes. It is not like much, you know, important to us. So for the gradient force, I would like to give 25 as a good start. And if you wish, you may could use the noise, which is, you know, uh, quite a small value, 0 0.025, which is, you know, going to break the normal flow of the fluids. So if this is done, the density section is done, we would like to move forward towards the velocity. In case of the velocity, we like to give thrill with the value of 6 and the noise to be 0.5 okay so that will going to bring some more disturbances inside the fluids and that will going to enrich the look on look and feel of the fluids for the turbulence yes we can utilize this attribute as well so 0.5 should be a good start with the frequency to be 0.55 and speed to be 0.35 all right so some internal turbulence will also going to affect the fluids and will finally going to give some more you can say magical kind of a smoke look and I guess these settings are quite promising. So before we move to the shading sections, I would first like to take a look at how we are actually receiving or how we are actually getting the look and feel of the fluids. So the fluid container is selected and it's time also to select the particles. Now it's time to go to the fluids and under the add edit contents, I would like to emit the fluid from the object. So here in this case, the particles are now acting as an object and fl fluid will going to be get emitted from the object so go and click here so we can go for the reset settings and the emitter type should be set to the omni and the fluid drop off set to the zero and hit and apply so once you are done with this and if I would like to play the timeline you can see that oh my god something which is um, horrible is happening so it's not the magic it's something like a disaster so how do we going to control that first of all we need to go inside the fluid emitter well, you can notice that the max distance is here, which is 1. That means for every single particles, the max distance is set to be 1. So you can imagine that if there is a container of the fluid and there's an emitter, the emitter will going to extend the fluid for approximately 1 centimeter, which is, you know, quite a big value. So I would like to change some things, which is, you know, max distance should be, let's say, 0.1. And the rate percentage should be, let's say, 1, 2, 5, 0, 1250 because for such a small distance the consistent particles are required to enhance the look and feel of the fluids and if this is done then you are required to use this attribute that's called as a motion streak which will going to you know dissolve the stamp spacing depths or the gaps between the fluids when once the fluid is emitted from the one point of the particle to the other point of the particles the gapping will going to get reduced or you can say there would be no more gappings and then we come to the emission speed attributes as you can notice that we have switched off the buoyancy which is you know set to the zero so how are we going to you know produce this smoke obviously the smoke will going to get produced by the external field as well and as well as the fluid internal velocity so in this case the velocity is set to the replace method which means that the fluid velocity is going to be replaced by these settings and we are definitely going to utilize the inherent velocity which means that the velocity the fluid will going to take from the particles okay 
So that's all about the story for the fluids. Now it's time to play the timeline and to see what exactly we have got in the raw form and then slowly and steadily we're going to fix that up. So as if for now I can see that this is quite nice and you can notice that the fluids are also falling along the particles which is absolutely great I don't have any problem and I think so I'm gonna put a pause over here so the best things we haven't touched which is the transparency as well as the opacity so it's time to tweak the graph so let us say I would like to have the graph like in this way and definitely I would come back again many times to fix this graph since the look and feel of the fluids is entirely and closely de dependent upon the graph so once we are done with this now it's time to move to the shelf shadow put it to the one so that we can see and we can take a look at the fluids in a much better way and I think so we are almost done with the settings now it's time to move to the next video where we would be talking about the important base resolutions the file base resolution and the external field that will going to help in establishing the best motion of the fluids alright so now it's time to move to the next video